Hey guys, my name's Maddie. Let's talk about night shoots. Now, me and Peter did a little night shoot yesterday and we realized it's so hard to do night shoots. They're really tough. So let's talk about five different things that you can do to take your night shoots to the next level. Before we get into it, I just want to say a huge thanks to all you guys who subscribed in the last couple days. On the last video, I said that only about 52% of you guys who are watching right now are subscribed to the channel. And I really appreciate all you guys who joined this community. And I just love having you guys here. And if you're still part of that percent who aren't subscribed, subscribe right now. Hit that button. Take the time. Just, just hit that subscribe button. All right, so night shoots. Night shoots can be really hard and it's kind of obvious why they're hard. It's because there's no light or very little light to work with. And if you do have light, it's usually this harsh, just not very good light that you're using. The light's not flattering. You're having to boost your ISO so your footage is noisy, et cetera, et cetera. Night shoots are really tough. But what can we do to make our footage even better when we're filming at nighttime? Number one is to use a fast lens. It makes a massive difference if your lens can do something like f2.8 or even lower f1.4, f1.8. You can get a lot more light with that. Here's a comparison, the exact same shot, exact same settings at f2.8 and then at f1.4. It's almost overexposed at f1.4, so I could drop down the ISO and then you're gonna get less noise. So it really makes a big difference to use a fast lens. My go-to lens for this would be the Sigma 35mm 1.4. It's just a really nice lens. And if you're not on a full frame, you're on a crop sensor, the Sigma 18 to 35 f1.8 is probably my favorite lens ever. I just wish it fit on full frame. It's what I'm using right now. It's my favorite lens and it's really fast. It's fairly affordable. I think it's around $800. So it's a really good option, a good range. But just because you need a fast lens doesn't mean you have to shell out a ton of money. You can use something like the Nifty 50, the 50 mil 1.8. It's only about $100. Or you can even use a vintage lens. This one only costs about $30. It's a 58 mil F2. So it's pretty fast. And then you just buy an adapter and use it on whatever camera you're using. So you don't need to spend a ton of money to get a faster lens but you definitely need one for nighttime shoots and in general, they're just really nice. Number two is to find a light. Now for YouTube or documentaries or anything like that where you're just running and gunning, you're probably not gonna have a light with you. So you need to find a light. And a lot of people would use something like a street lamp or something like that, but that's a really unflattering light. It's a really harsh, small light just beaming down and it's probably not even that bright. So it's not gonna light your subject very well. I recommend finding a nice big soft soft so for example, here I was just using a storefront. It had a light coming through. And here we found this overhead light that was really cool looking. I really like this super cinematic, nice soft light coming from above. And you can even use something like this. It's just an LED panel sign thing in front of a building. It looks kind of cool. It's an interesting look. So just find a big soft source. And big tip here is to get really close to it. The closer you get, the brighter it's gonna be and the softer it's gonna be. Avoid those small, hard lights and it's gonna be way more flattering for your subject and you're just gonna get better footage. Number three, silhouette your subject. So let's say you don't have a big soft source. What can you do? You use that harsh light, but use it to silhouette your subject. Especially if you're using a nice fast lens, let's say an F1.4, you're gonna get really nice bokeh in the background and that's gonna just silhouette your subject really nicely, just makes it pop, or even just using a brighter background to just silhouette your subject. It just works really well 
well to silhouette because there's so much contrast that your eyes are automatically drawn to that spot. Don't worry about having perfect lighting on your subject, having beautiful light on the face or something like that. As long as you can see a silhouette like this, your eyes are immediately drawn to it and it just keeps the attention. Number four, don't go too high on the ISO. Now you're gonna need to boost your ISO a little bit, but don't go too high with it or else your footage is just gonna look really, really bad. Now what's too high of an ISO? That totally depends on the camera that you're using. For example, here I was using the 1DX Mark II and here we see the footage at ISO 3200, 6400, 12,800 and then 25,600. And you can see the footage looks pretty decent, still at 6,400, but after that it starts falling apart a little bit and there's quite a bit of noise, especially at 25,600. So try to keep your ISO down, don't boost it too high, but it's a bit of a balancing game because it's always better to actually be able to see your subject and have a little bit more noise than to not be able to see your subject at all and not have any noise in the frame. And if you use a really high ISO, make sure to denoise in post. Now, unfortunately, most programs don't come with a denoiser, but denoising in post can really help with the footage that has a lot of that noise, especially that digital different colored noise. It just doesn't look good. So make sure to use a denoiser. That's gonna make a huge difference to your footage. And then number five, this one's not so obvious, but it's to avoid slow motion. The more frames per second that you're shooting at, the more light you need. And because it's dark outside, you don't have very much light, you're basically just gonna have to keep boosting your ISO, which is gonna make your footage worse. Here you can see the exact same shot with the same settings, just changing the shutter speed to fit the different frame rates at 24, at 60p, and 120p. And you can see the difference in the amount of light that's coming into the sensor. You need so much more light to go from something like 24 frames per second to 120, it's just a drastic difference. And again, because you're not adding more light to the scene, you basically just have to boost your ISO and eventually it just doesn't look good at all because it's so noisy. So try to avoid shooting in slow motion. But if you do have to shoot in slow motion, make sure you either have lights with you or you're finding really bright lights in the city to work with. Slow motion is one of the hardest things to do at nighttime. So do your best to avoid it. All right, there you go. Five tips on how you can take your night shoots to the next level. I really hope these helped you guys because night shoots are so hard. I don't know how much you guys shoot at nighttime. It was actually a really fun experience just learning again, trying to figure out how it all works because I don't do that many night shoots, but it's a really good skill to have because you never know if you're gonna have to shoot at nighttime and you need to be able to use these different tools to get the most out of your nighttime footage. There's nothing worse than going home after you've shot a whole night and then just having gross, garbage, noisy, not good footage footage. So take these tips, put them into practice and get yourself some better nighttime footage. I hope you like this video. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, be a part of the 52% of you who are watching right now who are subscribed. Guys, enjoy the filmmaking process and go get some of those travel feels. Oh, and if you want photography tips on how to shoot better nighttime photos, then go and check out Peter's video. I'll link it down below.